Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lisa Bug Mind Body Blend in the month of February 2023. Our focus for the month is the theme, the art of slowing down. So sometimes in our life, we kind of either live at sleeping or go, 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 go. And there's nothing really in between. And it can be that way too with our exercise and our workouts. And so I'm gonna explore a few different ways that we can slow down to create a little bit more intentional movement. And one way we've been doing that these past few weeks and months is with our Tai Chi at the beginning of class. So I'm gonna review some Tai Chi movements as we warm up. And then I'll give you the opportunity to modify those a little bit with the use of hand weights. If you don't have weights, you can still continue to do these Tai Chi movements. It's all great, wonderful, mindful movement. But if you do have hand weights at home, you'll have the opportunity to add some resistance with these movements. So let's just come to a standing position with your feet maybe separated hips distance apart and a nice long spine. And if you feel comfortable doing this first part with your eyes closed, just listen to my voice. If you don't and it makes you feel like you're losing your balance, just open your eyes just slightly with a soft gaze. And bring your hands right in front of your body and make a fist. And then as you inhale, spread your fingers as wide as you can spread them and take a really deep breath in. And then as you exhale, close your hands and make a gentle fist. And we'll move this breath as slowly as you can, inhaling to open the hands working the muscles of the fingers to spread them wide and lengthen. Exhale to create that gentle, soft fist, or you could make it a little bit tighter to feel those muscles working in your forearms and in your biceps. And just notice how you feel the breath is moving as you create this deeper, more intentional breath. Are you able to send it lower into your belly or is it more up into your chest, in your rib cage? You try to fill the lungs completely and also deplete the lungs completely at the end of each breath. And we'll take one more breath, inhaling to open the hands. Exhaling to make that gentle fist. And then as you return to a normal breath, just allow your arms to come down next to the sides of your body. You can blink your eyes open as we begin to move gently into cloud hands. So we'll take our left hand, bring it down, around, and open it out. Let it lower, then take your right hand down, open it out, and lower. We'll just do one more on each side. And I'll let you apply the breath wherever it feels right for you. Then as we combine this together, as the left hand comes down and around, opens, the right arm begins the movement. And so they just begin to intersect. We're going slow, start to rotate your body. And 
And I'm making this a little bit bigger than what we generally make it in our Tai Chi form when we're doing our cloud hands. When we're going slower, we can enjoy a bigger movement. Now in our Tai Chi form with our cloud hands, we take three steps one direction and three steps the other. So we're going to start to move to the left slowly as the left hand comes across. We step in as the hands intersect and switch. We step again to the left. And as you step, try to keep one foot off the floor for an extended period of time rather than just stepping and setting it down. After you finish these three steps, just do one little cloud hand here. We'll start to move to that right side, stepping as the right arm opens. Ooh, there goes the balance. Slower movement requires more balance and control. It would be much easier for me to shift and step directly onto that foot, but spend some time keeping it lingering above the floor. We have one more step to the right side. And then come into right ball. So when we're in a right ball, the right hand is on top, the left hand is underneath. And this can be small or bigger, depending on where you want to go with your shoulders. Stand on your right foot, lift your left foot off the floor. And we are going to practice part the wild horse's mane, but I'm going to take a step directly out to my left side. So take that leg out, extend your heel, and as you contract the floor, switch the hands to part the wild horse's mane, look toward your fingertips, shift your body weight back onto your right foot, picking up the left toes, pivot, and step toward that left foot, tapping the right foot into left ball. Step out directly to your right side, strike the heel, and part the mane. Pivot on the heel and come into right ball. Now usually this is done stepping out on a diagonal, but then we're going to be traveling forward. So that's why I want you to try to send your direction to a path directly to the side. Part the mane. Pivot and come into left ball. And when we do our form, it always has a little bit of a preload or a prep. So we start to turn a little bit to the left, then we turn out to the right, reach that foot, part the mane, shifting your body weight, pivot on the heel. And we'll do one more on each side from your right ball Prep or preload, step directly out to the side, part the mane, pivot on the heel, come into left ball, find your balance, prep, step directly to the side and take your time, use your balance there, part the mane, pivot, and come in. So just for today's class, I'm going to add a little movement of the arm to create a tricep kickback. And we'll notice how that's going to work for us when we use our weights. So let's come again into right ball. Do your preload prep. Step directly out to the left. Take your time, plant your heel, part the main. And notice how your elbow is up behind you on your right side. Keep it in place and extend your arm out to straight.
that activates your tricep. As you pivot on the heel, let that arm float down as you come into left ball. Prep, preload, step directly out to the right, part the main, your elbow is up behind you on that left side, keep it there, extend the arm straight, pivot on the heel, and come back into right ball. We'll try that one more on each side. Prep, step out, striking the heel, part the main, elbow is up, extend the arm straight into your kickback, pivot on the heel, shift down with the arm into left ball, prep, rotate the body, look directly to that right side, strike the heel as you part the main, your elbow comes up, extend your arm straight, lower the arm down as you pivot on the heel, and come into right ball. So if you don't have hand weights, we're going to continue with this sequence as you are, or grab hand weights and decide what size you'd like to go to experience some resistance with this sequence. So I'm just taking my threes for now. I can always go up and make it a little bit harder. And then just come into right ball. So you'll notice, okay, where do I need to have my hands with these weights? What's the action of what's happening here? And my right arm is raised up, about shoulder height or a little lower. So I'm getting a shoulder exercise. My left arm is bent, so I have a bicep curl. And we're just going to step out into cloud hands. So start to prep to your right. Step out and then just switch your arms. We'll do three steps to the right. And you'll know right away if your weights seem a little bit heavy for this movement. And right now I'm feeling like threes is good because the movement is so slow that my muscles are under constant tension. I'm never relaxing my arms down. As we take one more step, let's hold our left ball. So now our left hand is on top. Prep or preload. Step out to the right. Now I really want you to listen to what's happening in your body. I am amazed at how much I'm feeling my pectoral muscles working and they are not the prime mover. So this is really interesting to me what I'm feeling here with the addition of these hand weights. I do feel the shoulder. I do feel the bicep. Let's take one more step to the right to come into right ball. And then take a break on the arms just a moment. Allow them to relax next to your sides. So let's try that part the wild horse's mane very slowly. If you need to back up a little bit, I'll try to step it directly out to the side, but you may move forward slightly. Let's come into right ball. Make that ball any size. Balance on your right foot. Turn directly out to the left. As you strike the heel, come into part the wild horse's mane, and let's hold. And notice what the action of the muscles are. So you have that left arm lifted, you're looking toward your hand, your right elbow is up and back, and we are in a lunge. So let's straighten out that right arm into your tricep kickback. As you pivot on that heel, shifting your body weight, the right arm comes down, Shift to stand on the left foot into left ball. Take a little prep or preload. Step directly out to the right as you part that wild horse's mane. The right hand comes up to face level. Left elbow is up behind you and let's hold for a moment. 
then slowly we'll straighten out that left arm. Feel the work in your tricep. As you pivot on the right heel, let the arm lower and come into right ball. Pause for a moment, relax your arms. So now that you've had a chance to try it, maybe you can go a little heavier in weight. Maybe you need to go lighter or we can stay the same. So we are going to do three more rounds on each side, very slowly, standing on the right foot, come into right ball. Prep and preload. Rotate, stepping directly out to that left side. Take your time to strike the heel. Shift your body weight, come into part the main. Extend that arm out to straight. Shift and pivot on the heel, and when you do, slowly let your arm descend down as the left hand comes into left ball, and we step and tap the foot. Preload. Step out to the right. This is the harder side for me to balance. Really take your time. Extend the arm to straight. Pivot on the heel, lowering it down. Come back into right ball. Tap the foot, two more on each side. Preload. Balance. Strike the heel, part the main. Hold. Slowly kick the arm to straight. Lower it down as you pivot on the heel. Shift into left ball, any size. Hesitate there so you feel these muscles working. Preload. Slowly step out to the right side. Part the main, lunging forward, left elbow back. We straighten that arm slowly, feel the work. Pivot on the heel to lower the arm slowly down. Shifting back into right ball. One more on each side. Take a breath. Preload. Step slowly. Part the main. Look toward your hand. Feel this arm working as the shoulder is elevating the arm. Then kick that left arm or right arm to straight. Pause there. Pivot on the heel as the arm descends. Coming into left ball, hold, hesitate, take a breath. Preload. Step directly out to that right side. Part the main, pause. Left elbow is up behind you. Left leg is straight, right knee is bent. Squeeze that arm to straight. Pivot on the heel. Let that arm float down. Coming back into right ball. We'll finish with cloud hands, moving to the left three times. So preload, step to the left, switching the arms. One, rotating your spine. And two. One more step and then we hesitate into left ball, tapping the heel or tapping the toe, prep. And move three times to the right side. Wow, I feel the intensity in the shoulders here even in the core. Try not to rush, we're almost there. One more step to the right. This brings us to right ball. And relax the arms. Step your feet, take the shoulders, roll them up and back, 
Pause for a moment, just to experience what you're feeling with that slow movement strength training. And then we'll go into some more movements, but this time allowing our legs to have a little bit more work. So bring the weights to your chest, any size. We are going to do a super slow squat. My feet are in parallel. Allow the hips to go back as we come down slowly, slowly, slowly. Notice where your end range is, where it feels best for your body, and stay there. Checking your alignment, noticing your abdominals engaged, and then not rushing, but just peeling away from the floor as we come up. So I'd like to take a four, four, four count. So we are coming down four seconds, three, two, one, holding four, three, two, one, rising four, three, two, back down. So there's no hesitation at the top. There's just a hesitation at the bottom with the work. And back up. One more time with no weight coming down four or with no upper body. Hesitating. And rising up. Now bring your arms by your side as you come down for four counts. Elbows will bend slightly as you bring them forward. When we come to the bottom, you're going to do four punches. Four, three, two, one. Come back and rise up. Four, three, two. Straighten the arms. Come down. Four, three, two. Hold four punches. One, two, three, four. Start to rise. Four, three, two. Arms straighten. Come on down. Biceps. Start with the other arm on the punch. Four, three, two. One, and come up. And again, down. Let's take those punches even slower. Four. Three. Two. One. And up. Okay, I have a timer in front of me. We are going to do this exercise for two more minutes. I'm not gonna count because I want you to go as slowly as you can, descending down as slowly as you can on the punches. If you need to set your weights down, that's okay. You're still gonna be getting the lower body work. All right, let's begin. Two minutes. Now, if you have any other variations that you feel would be fun for you to try with this, then get creative. So we've got slow movement on both sides of that squat. Then we have slow upper body shoulder and spinal rotation movements while we're holding our squat. Nice isometric action. Wow, it's almost taking me a full minute to do two of them. We're right at one minute now, so you have one minute to go. The 
this slow movement gives you time to really focus on good alignment and form. 45 seconds to go. Twenty-five seconds to go. Maybe time to get one more round. So I don't want you to rush your last repetition, even if you go a little bit more than two minutes. Last five seconds. And relax. Roll those shoulders. Maybe shake out the legs a little bit. Okay, we're moving into a split stance squat. So step your right foot slightly forward of your left. We have the heel up in the back foot. And the hips go back just the same way as you come down into the squat. Bring the arms forward. And as you hold, open your arms, rotate out. And then as you come up, the arms descend down. So we're doing that circumduction with the shoulders that we did a couple weeks ago. The arms come forward as we lower. We hold in place, rotate out. And as the arms come down, we rise back up. Now from here, one more minute on this right side in front. And you're going down as slowly as you can. Opening the arms slowly, rising up slowly, no rush. So if your weights are too heavy to do the arms completely straight, you know your options are to create a shorter lever. So we can bend the elbows quite a bit. We can just open them out to the side, nice and bent and close in 15 seconds i have time for one more six seconds and then as we come up keep your right foot on the floor Lift your left knee up off the floor into single leg stance, holding 10, 9, 8. Good posture. Shoulders back. 3, 2, and 1. Set that foot down onto the floor. Come into your split stance. Left foot is in front, right foot behind, your heel is up. We'll do two reps before I start the minutes time. So let's come on down slowly as the arms come forward. Take your time to open. And come up. Could feel a little bit different for you on balance on this side. So take your time just to experience to make any adjustments that you need. Okay, our one minute starts beginning now. I don't know if the microphone's picking up my cracking knee. If you're wondering, what is that noise? It's my knee. <laughs> wow. It doesn't hurt. It's just pretty annoying. You're halfway, 30 seconds, guys. How are we doing with those shoulders? Maybe you need to bend your elbows. 
Here's your last one. Next time you rise up, relax those shoulders, shake out the legs. Great job. So I'd like for you to pick fairly heavy weights. We are going to do a lateral flexion of the spine. I'm gonna go all the way up to my eight pounders. So all we are going to do with this movement is side bending. So it's a wonderful strengthener for the back. So stay with a nice tall spine and then start to side bend your body as far as you can over to the right. And then as you connect with the bottom, pause there for a second and then pull yourself back up. Move to the left, maybe about four or five seconds to get to your end range. And pulling up. Good, and again to the right, slowly. So it's a nice combination of a really good stretch for the QL, for the muscles of the side waist as we're strengthening. All right, so you can stay with both weights. Or we can change and make this a different effectiveness if we only have a weight in the right hand. So I'm gonna set my left one down. Now I'm unbalanced, so already I have to work my core a little bit more here. Shift your body weight to your right foot. Pick up your left and take your foot out to the side, your arm out to the side. This is our lateral leg raise. You might need to keep your toe gently tapped and we are going to tip. Now this arm can come up with you if you want. It can even go over and stretch. And then pull it up slowly Maybe you can lift that foot slightly off the floor. One minute on this side. So that lateral leg raise is activating the muscle of the hip. You've got good balance work in the standing leg and a lot of core work here. If you don't have heavy weights too, when you're doing one side, you can double up those hand weights. 20 seconds. Almost there. Finish the rep you're on. And relax. Tell me what you're feeling. Wow, I'm feeling that standing leg in the shin, the ankle, and a lot in that QL muscle, the lower back, the muscle that's shaped like a big diamond, and it allows our body to move side to side. Let's place that weight in the left hand, stand on the left foot, tap the right toe. Now this side I already know is gonna be harder for me because I really have a hard time balancing on my it's my right foot that I'm on, even though it looks the left side facing the camera. This is really challenging for me to stand on that foot. One minute beginning now. Even without a hand weight, it's a very challenging exercise because we are shifting our body center of gravity so much off the center line to do this exercise and slowly is really challenging. I could probably speed this up and do a little bit better with my balance. 
but that's not what our intent is today for this exercise. We have 15 seconds on this side. Almost there, five seconds, three, finish the one you're on, and relax it down. Ooh, okay, keeping one or both heavy weights. So we are going to do a clean and press action with our arms. So the modified version, we bend our elbows, and as we do, we come down into a little baby squat. Then as we stand up out of the squat, we press the weights above our head any amount, if that's okay with your shoulders. Then as the arms are bending back down, we descend back down into those legs. And then as we stand up, the elbows straighten. So there's a four part movement. We bend the elbows as we squat down. We press any amount above the head or we can stay right here. We come back down. And we rise up. So you have two minutes of the slowest, most controlled clean and press in your version that you can do. Take a breath to prepare. And begin. Ninety seconds to go. How's your breathing? You might have to take more breaths than one per movement. One minute to go. I got two done in a minute. Yours may be different just depending on whether you're pressing clear above your head or not. Or whether or not you have hand weights. Really try to slow it down. Especially when those weights are pushing you back down into the ground. We have 30 seconds to go. So try not to rush. Wherever you're at, finish slowly this last repetition that you're on. When you get there, Relax, check in, see how everything felt with that exercise. We are going down to the mat. So if you need to drag your mat out on the floor, create space to come down to the floor. So our first exercise is a push up. So I'm gonna give you the option not to come down and to go ahead and do a wall push up because it's still very effective to do your push-up against the wall. So if you're up, when you do the push-up against the wall, make sure that your hands are a little wider than your shoulders. They can come in closer, but that your elbows are pointing down like this. So we don't want to do a push-up with our elbows directly up against the wall. It really puts some stress on the shoulder. So if you're standing up against the wall, you're going to walk your feet back and get in a good position. If we're coming down to the mat, 
same thing. We don't want the elbows directly out to the side. We want to tuck them in a little bit. Hands a comfortable distance apart. We can do this from all fours, hands and knees. We can walk our knees back behind us a little bit into that kneeling plank. We can always come up on our toes to do really challenging those military push-ups. So we are going to do the four, four, four count here with our push-ups. So activate your abs first, really solid. Get ready to begin. Coming down, four slow counts. Holding whatever your range is, four counts. Pressing up slow, four counts. Ooh, I know I came up too quick. I probably only came up in two, so I'm going to have to really watch that. Okay, so we have two minutes. If you need a break, you can take it at any time. Otherwise, we'll move continuous. Ready? And begin at your own pace. Now, you don't have to go all the way down chest to the floor. I want you to let your shoulders be your guide. Try not to rush, coming back up to the top. Now the nice thing about a push-up, one of the nice things, is we get extra amount of core work if we really keep our body in neutral. So focus on that nice neutral spine. So your back doesn't arch like this, or you're not putting your bum up in the air as you're doing that push-up. You have a really straight spinal alignment. Let's see, we're almost at the first minute mark. Wow. If you need a break, you can always come back to child's pose or shake out those wrists a couple of times. We have a little less than a minute to go. Now in two minutes, we might be only getting maybe six push-ups, and that's okay because these are likely a lot harder than doing 20 push-ups fast in this two minutes. Ay, ay, ay. Let's see, what do we got? We've got 20 seconds left. Boy, I really feel the heat building in my triceps. You guys have seven seconds. Maybe you can get one more in there. Finish the one you're on. And then anything you need to do to relax and shake out those arms or stretch. Wow. Okay, so we're going to do some very slow core stabilization. Come on down onto your back. So if you were up doing your wall push up, come on down. And then as we come down to our back, the knees start bent and I really want you to find a really good neutral alignment. So as always, I teach these exercises in levels. So level one, your left foot's going to stay on the floor as we slide the right leg out to straight without moving our pelvis at all. This is really locked in tight. And then we slowly bring it back in with or without setting it down on the mat. Your next level up is to have your knees in tabletop. And when you're in tabletop, sometimes your knees want to come in like this. And that's really not working your core when your knees are in like this. So I want you to take your hands, put them out so that your arms are basically straight when you're touching your knees. And that is table position. And you can even leave your hands here to make sure your knees don't start encroaching toward your chest. 
And from here, the right leg goes out very slowly, trying to keep your lower back compressed to the floor. You maybe pause there and then slowly you bring it back in. So we are going to do that right side for 60 seconds in five, four, three, two, and go. And again, you might only get maybe four reps because you're doing this really slow, very mindful, very intentional, and try not to hold your breath. Now, if you're in tabletop and your back is starting to talk to you, that means your left foot needs to be down onto the mat. If your back is still talking to you and your foot is on the mat, tuck your hands right underneath your pelvis. And that's going to help a little bit to brace that pelvic area. We're almost there. Keep breathing. This will be your last repetition on this side. Take your time. Press that low back down. Once that right foot comes all the way in, relax both feet down to the mat and allow your knees to open and relax. So we're giving our hip flexors a little chance to relax and soften before we go to the other side. Because sometimes just holding your knee up and that wasn't doing really anything causes your hip flexors to tighten. And then when we get to the other side, it's a little bit more difficult to do the exercise. All right, so let's close the knees together. Just for grins, let's all try one in level one so you can get the feel of what this feels like to keep the right foot on the floor and slowly, slowly just skim your heel along the mat and not let your pelvis move. This requires a lot of intention in your abs. And then pull it in. And then let's all come to tabletop. And I just want you to experience the difference between bringing your knees in and how that's working your abs in this case, not working your abs, or taking your hands out and just stay here for a second. And this should feel like work. So let's try taking that left leg out slowly. And if your low back starts to pop right up off the floor, you'll know that this exercise isn't for you today. We need to build some more strength first. Okay, so decide which one you want to do. We have 60 seconds beginning now. And it's amazing how challenging this is when you're going really slow, even making my voice get quivery. If you do a couple up in tabletop and you have to put, place that right foot on the ground, no problem. At least you've tried a couple and you've gotten that, that little extra bit of work. For me, I find it easier to go out slow, harder to come back in slow. My body wants to pull it in fast. We have 15 seconds, so probably time for one more. Keep that low back pressing down, down, down. Once you've completed that last one, allow your feet to come back down to the mat and allow your knees to open out. Now, if that bothers your low back, then you can do any other stretch here, maybe knees to chest or just extend your legs out straight to release your hip flexors as well. So now we're going to do 
both legs. And you might say, oh my gosh, I don't think I can do both legs. But here's your option for level one with both legs. You're gonna have your feet on the floor. Your toes will be off the mat, so just your heels are on the floor. And you're going to take little baby walking steps to start to walk your feet away from your glutes. You can go out as far as you want. You can go out till your legs are completely straight, or you can have some bends still in your knees, and then you'll walk your heels slowly back in. So your next option, of course, is knees in table. So there's a big range at which we can extend our legs out, right? So if our abs aren't really strong, but we want to try some from here, we can extend our feet straight up to the ceiling and then bend our knees back into tabletop. So I'm really not changing the angle of my hips. Or we can start extending the legs away from us on any angle down toward the floor. So we have one minute starting now. Level one, walking your heels away, walking them back. Level two from table, just straightening the legs straight up to the ceiling slowly. Or level three, extending them away at any angle that you can manage that pelvic stability. And we're going slow. Wow, we're halfway. You have 30 seconds, guys. I'm trying not to use my hands to brace on the mat, but it's okay if you need to a little bit. We've got time for one more. And once you bring it in, relax your feet down to the mat and hold here. Tuck your tailbone under and press that lower back down into the mat. A little bit of a pelvic tilt. Then lift your hips up off the mat into bridge. And we're just going to hold our bridge here. And while we hold the bridge, hips are up, the arms slowly lift up off the mat. And try to find that range of motion where you can bring your arms all the way above the head if you can for your shoulders or whatever range that you have right now in the shoulders. And then slowly bring your arms back down to your sides. You can also make a little bit of a snow angel. So opening your arms out, let them circle until they come above the head. And then circle out along the floor until they come back next to the sides of the body. So we're going to hold our bridge up one more minute with any of these arm movements slowly that you'd like to do. All right, beginning now. Now your bridge doesn't have to be high. Even if your hips are just a couple of inches off the mat, you have that engagement of those muscles. But as you're holding your bridge, I want you to imagine that you're pulling your heels toward your, your bum. So you're activating those hamstrings a little bit more. And do that gently so that you're not causing any cramping in your hamstrings. That can often happen. You're halfway, 30 seconds to go. Finish the arm movements that you're on. The next time your arms come back down by your sides, 
you're going to slowly come down from your bridge as slowly as you can, one vertebra at a time. So start with that upper back and curve it. Send the next backbone down without dropping the rest of it down to the mat. So you're really tucking your tailbone under as your back comes down, down, down. At the very end, you should really be tucking your tailbone up off the floor until that lower back finds the mat and relax. We'll finish our class today with an activate, active hamstring stretch. So your left knee stays bent, your right leg is straightened. We're going to lift that leg slowly up off the mat. When you get to your top range, pause there, hesitate. And slowly lower that right leg back down. Active movement, but very slow range of motion exercise here. Your left leg can also be straight along the floor rather than knee bent. Let's get one more on this right leg. Coming up slow to find your end range of motion. Bring it back down and then set that right foot down to the mat. Your left leg lengthens, tighten your quadricep muscle and slowly lift that leg up, up, up. Finding your edge, hesitating there, pause and slowly coming down. So there's many styles of working our flexibility. As you know, you can hold a stretch like a yin pose for several minutes. You can hold a stretch for 20 seconds, but you can also stretch with consistent movement here. Dynamic flexibility. And we have one more, pull it up slowly. Find your edge, hold, and slowly 